I'm Frances Fowle, and I am senior curator at the Scottish National Gallery and a reader in history of art at, the, at Edinburgh University. So uh, today I'm going to talk about Mary Cassatt uh, and the painting Summertime of 1894 in the Terror Foundation collection. Cassatt is an artist who's always interested me, uh, mainly because she belongs to the French tradition. There's this big question about what is her nationality? To Americans, she's uh, very clearly an American artist. To us, uh, from a European perspective, I, you know, she's part of that French tradition. And she was the only American artist to be part of the, this group of artists now known as the, the Impressionists. Uh, so she spent most of her career in Paris. And uh, towards the later part of her career, she bought the Chateau de, de Beaufren, which is actually the, um, the location for the painting. Um, and this was her first permanent home in France. And she lived there for the rest of her life until she died. But she came from Philadelphia. She came over to France after the American Civil War with her family. America Sat very often painted women and children. That was kind of what she was known for, particularly mothers and babies. But these paintings are quite constructed. Um, they're not genuine mothers and children. She would pose models in in the kind of whatever sort of situation she wanted to, them to be in. And in this particular case, she's got them posed in the boat and she's actually sitting on the side. This is actually a, the pond at the back of the chateau and she's sitting on the bank and watching these figures in the boat. If you look at the picture, you can see how it, it's very much a focused view of these two women in a boat. She did another version, which is a kind of taking a more distant view. But with this, I think that the terror painting is much more impactful. It, has, it really is very kind of strong. Because she's uh, excluded any kind of background detail, you really focus in on the women and the boat. And notice how the boat is cropped to one side. That's very much a Japanese device. The implication is that there obviously is somebody rowing the boat, but he's being cut out of the scene. And one of the things that fascinates me is the way that, in which they're dressed, because uh, the woman is, she's wearing these kind of summer gloves, very fashionable to wear, and she's quite sort of buttoned up. She wears her hat to shade herself from the sun. If you think about other American paintings of this period, the women are not so buttoned up, they, and they often don't cover their, their, um, their faces. They don't, they're not worried about getting bronzed, whereas it was very much kind of the fashion to have pale skin uh, in Europe. Uh, whereas the young girl is quite freely dressed. She's kind of wearing this little kind of skimpy sundress. And you could interpret this in, in a quite interesting way. She, she painted this picture the year after she exhibited or rather produced a mural for the uh, Columbian World Exposition of 1893. And she did a mural on which was entitled Modern Women. Um, and perhaps we're, we should really look at these women as modern women. And they're women who are inquiring. They're not turned away from life, from the outside world, they're discovering. It was difficult for women to compete in the same kind of field as, as male artists. Unlike the other Impressionists, she, was not, she wasn't able to go to, well, she couldn't be a member of the Académie des Beaux-Arts, but she also didn't train at the same kind of atelier that they trained. And she was welcomed into the Impressionist fold by Edgar Degas, uh, and I think partly because they came from the same kind of social background, but also because he recognized that she was a great artist. And she, he invited her to join the Impressionist group and to exhibit with them in the 1870s. It was actually 1879 when she first participated in Impressionist exhibitions. And then she exhibited with them four times. So she was a, an important core member of the group. Having said that, both she and Duga didn't regard themselves as Impressionists as such. They always fought against that label and described themselves as independent artists, artistes indépendants. In fact, she, she once said that Monet was the only true Impressionist. Um, but, you know, when you look at the painting, you can see that, that she is very much responding to this Impressionist style, the loose brushwork, the use of complementary colours, the idea of capturing a moment, a snapshot of reality. And this particular work is very strongly influenced by Japanese prints, which uh, a lot of the Impressionists were interested in. The idea of the woman kind of looking towards the mallard is borrowed loosely from Japanese prints, probably, not the, particularly the Japanese artist Haranubu, who uh, would show a figure perhaps leaning out to, catch a, to, catch, to pluck a lotus flower. But here she's looking at a, a mallard 
<laughs> um, and uh, in fact, America Sat developed this idea in later prints um, of people in a boat with, with ducks. The subject of boating is one which actually is quite common in Impressionist art. Uh, and she, she, in fact, Mary Cassatt had painted the similar sort of subject the year before, but based in Antibes. And it's a much more solid example of her work. Her style varies quite considerably. And I would say this is one of the more impressionist examples, you know, with this very kind of loose brushwork and exploration of complementary colours. The previous work was much more kind of linear and interested in, like Degas, very interested in unusual compositions. So hence, in this picture, we've got the, the high viewpoint and the, and the cropping. It's very common to, to find in Impressionist pictures that uh, a lot of the underpainting has been left exposed, or even the canvas has been exposed. But with this Cassatt painting, it's actually quite, um, it's quite finished or quite, quite um, overlaid. The whole surface is, is quite thoroughly covered with, with very broad strokes of paint, rather than the kind of small um, tash that one kind of, kind of associates with Impressionism, the comma-like brushstroke. There is another work in the Terra Foundation which uh, shows Jenny and her sleepy child, which is very different in technique and in terms of finish. So with that work, it almost looks like it is unfinished and that a lot of the uh, prepared ground is exposed, which gives a, a, a much more kind of immediate raw feel to it. A lot of the ground is allowed to show through. It's very sketch-like, very kind of sparse painting. You know, there is a big question about whether that picture actually is finished. And very often with the Impressionists, they would work on something and then they would return to it. Um, so maybe she, she intended to go back to that picture and, and work on it a little bit more. When we talk about Impressionism, there are so many different aspects to Impressionism. Uh, and, and, this, and this idea of a painting being finished or not, and, or, or painted in the open air, there are, there are all sorts of myths surrounding um, this idea of Impressionism. And I think they were perpetuated by people like Monet, who liked to give the impression that he completed everything in the open air, but in fact, went, often went back to the studio. Um, and, and again, it was often to do with whether they intended to exhibit the work or, or to, to maybe hand it on to um, a friend or to sell it through the market. So you, um, dealers would always encourage painters to, to finish and to sign their works. Uh, and and um, I, I, I get the impression that with um, Summertime, it's one that she definitely intended to, uh, to exhibit because it, it, it has that feel of a, of, of a completed work.